Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you very much for joining me tonight. Uh, so we've just got a few more people joining in. So just let those in. Uh, so I really appreciate, uh, obviously, um, committing your evening or part of your evening tonight uh, to give me an opportunity to talk to you about digital dentistry. Um, so we've got quite a nice evening planned. Um, we're going to have some bits from myself, um, and then we're also um, we've also got two guest speakers, as you've seen. Uh, in the invite and all over social media, we've got Simon Fieldhouse and Jack Gleave. So we'll introduce um, those guys properly a little bit later. Uh, so really the main goal for this evening is um, to spark your interest in digital dentistry. So I think tonight you've taken possibly that first step towards your own digital transformation. Um, and this evening, um, we're really hoping to provide you with enough information um, to allow you to take um, the next step towards digital. Um, so the digital environment today, um, it's seen decades of innovation um, surrounding digital impressions, and it's getting harder and harder to ignore. Um, this is the main focus for tonight. Um, and the nice thing is we're gonna hear about this, not just from myself um, as a manufacturer, um, but we're gonna hear from someone who can talk firsthand about their own digital journey within dentistry, and also see this from the other side as well. Um, with what happens to our scans. So uh, for the agenda tonight, um, you can see on the screen everything that we're going to cover. Um, we'll start shortly with a proper introduction um, and then we'll move on to uh, look at other industries which went digital um, and ended up um, completely changing our lives. Um, and we'll look at how uh, this trend is currently imp impacting our own industry, um, dentistry. So our cl clinician, Dr. Simon Fieldhouse, um, will then share his own experience of his own digital transformation with us and what embracing digital um, really means. We'll then come back to myself. Um, I'll give everybody a guide on what to look out for when picking the right scanner um, and some things to consider. Um, so what things should we consider when we're looking at a digital scanner? Um, and then I'll also be switching over to a scanner, which I have beside me. Um, called the Prime Scan, um, and I'm actually going to scan live a model, so not quite a patient, but I'll be scanning a model live, um, and I'll send this over to our technician, um, Jack Gleave, who is also with us. Um, we'll then wrap up very quickly with a brief bit about Dent Spicer Owner at the end, um, what you can expect from us as a, as a company, um, and then we'll open up properly for a Q&A at the end, so please do stay for that. Um, We'll also hear a final word as well um, from Simon and Jack and just some of the things that they're working on um, at the end as well. So please do stay. So uh, to introduce myself, um, my name is Jack. Uh, I'm the CAD CAM specialist for London and the entire south of England at the moment. So that stretches all the way from Cornwall um, all the way up to Norwich uh, and everything south of that. Um, obviously, I'm not a clinician myself. Um, but I do have the experience of working with clinicians on a daily basis um, who are in basically every stage um, of their own digital journey from um, real beginners, people just looking at dipping their toes in um, to real experts in the field that have, that have really been in, the, in this part of the industry for, for quite a few years. So, um, so far, I've been a specialist for over a year, um, but I've been working with dentists at Dense by Serena for over four years. Um, in other fields as well, such as uh, endodontics. So I'm also joined by Dr. Simon Fieldhouse, who is here to share his own experiences during his own digital transformation. Simon is an international key opinion leader for Dents by Serona and lectures on every aspect of digital dentistry, ranging from clinical, uh, patient and business aspects. Simon has, a, has been a practice owner for the last 13 years in Bradford-upon-Avon uh, and is a registered specialist in oral surgery where he utilizes the full range of digital technology um, to plan everything from implant surgery uh, to crowns and bridges. We're also joined by a dental technician this evening, which is Jack Gleave, who brings with him more than 20 years worth of dental uh, laboratory experience. Uh, he currently works in and he currently owns Octopus Dental Lab um, in Cornwall. Um, Jack is passionate about working with the latest dental technology and techniques 
and utilizes it in his workflow for implants, CAD CAM, and bespoke ceramic layering. And you'll be hearing a bit more from him later about that. Uh, so uh, Simon and Jack, would you like to give a quick hello? Hi guys. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, I think Simon was on mute there, but hello. <laughs> we'll forgive him. Oh, <laughs> <mute. There we> <laughs> <go>. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> It's probably the most famous words of uh, 2020. Uh, so <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, to warm up um, and to get us thinking in the right mindset for this evening, uh, I'd like to play a four minute video, uh, which has got some, uh, it's not just about dentistry, it's just some overall and um, quite eye opening facts uh, about digital uh, and where the world is going. So enjoy. Right, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, there's some quite eye-opening facts in there, um, especially about all the hours of YouTube videos uploaded literally within a four minute period. It's just incredible to think that you'll never ever be able to watch uh, even just what goes up to you, gets uploaded onto YouTube within a day, let alone everything that's actually archived on that website uh, alone, it's incredible. So uh, to move into the next part of the presentation, uh, this is part two uh, called it's time to go digital so uh, really in this section we're just going to look at the industry in general uh, we're going to look um, at the UK compared to the rest of the world in dentistry where things are heading uh, and how this compares um, so if you ask yourself what is happening in our industry currently um, you know regardless of our place in the industry whether or not it's you know myself as a manufacturer um, or yourselves as um, practice owners, clinicians. Um, this is something that we all have to do um, is observe industry trends. And we have to recognize where our industry and business currently is, where things are due to go in the next few years uh, in order to stay competitive. Um, so these questions um, have already be, been asked um, on a large scale in the UK by the BDIA. Um, and they release what they call a spotlight every other year. Um, and in this spotlight, um, as you can see here for 2019, uh, over 400 people in the UK, uh, and these were mainly dentists, um, were asked uh, again in 2019, which technology and equipment they have already purchased. Um, and in the top three positions uh, were digital sensors, practice management software, and intraoral cameras. Uh, and note that these are different to scanners. Um, these are cameras, obviously scanners do have that function as well, but these are technically a separate category. Uh, one of the next questions in that same survey was, um, what do you intend to buy in the next year leading into 2020? Uh, the biggest percentage here uh, was 22%. Um, and that was people who answered that they are intending to purchase an intraoral scanner as their next purchase. Um, the next along from there again was intraoral cameras. Again, that's different, but it is also a function that can be coupled with um, a scanner. Um, so biggest um, proportion by far um, said that a scanner was gonna be their next purchase. Uh, then in a global study, uh, which was conducted by Dents by Serona, uh, and this was in our uh, largest global markets, which is uh, the UK, USA, and Germany. Uh, nearly 900 dentists were asked this time, um, about five developments in digital dentistry, which were most important. Um, intraoral scanners um, were again in the lead by quite a big uh, margin at 62%. They were then asked uh, when they intended to purchase a digital impression system for their practice. Um, and more than 60%, if we combine the top three results, said uh, within the next five years. So 46% are planning to purchase within the next two to three years, 18% um, are looking to purchase within the next uh, 12 months. Uh, so what we can see from these um, figures really is that the dental industry globally is moving this way. This isn't just a UK centric thing. This is being echoed throughout the entire world. Um, so I'm not sure you know, how surprising this is to everyone. Um, I know obviously this has been on the cards um, for quite a while for a lot of dentists um, that I speak to. But it is nice to see that it, you know, it is the whole world that's, that's moving this way uh, in the dental industry. So on that note, um, that's 
uh, all well and good. We are now ready to move over to Dr. Simon Fieldhouse, who has already moved into his, he's already gone ahead with his own digital transformation a few years ago. Uh, and I'm, I'll leave it with him to tell you all about it. So please uh, take it away, Simon. Thank you, Jack. Uh, so I've just got to press a few of the correct buttons here. <laughs> and uh, there we go. And so, um, yeah, when uh, Dent Spicer and uh, um, thank you very much for asking me to talk about this tonight, asked me to talk about or talk on their digital transformation they said initially please talk about digital impressions then talk about a digital practice and um, the reality is that every single thing i mentioned tonight um i could talk all day about and, and frequently have done in the past and hopefully will do so in the future so i've got about 20 minutes to literally rattle through very very quickly some of the the benefits of um digital dentistry in in many forms for our practice but not really our practice my patients or our patients and um, also the staff and of course you you know what are the benefits to you the practitioner so the first thing is you know what is a digital practice well that's a picture of one and that's the front of our practice in Bradford and Avon it's a 16th century building and I think the point I'm trying to make is that any practice can be digital it doesn't have to have lots of glass and be very Bauhaus. It can, digital dentistry can be done absolutely anywhere. So that is, as I say, my first point. So, um, okay, hoping my next slide, there we go, good. As I said, they also asked me to talk tonight about digital impressions or DI. Um, and I'm not gonna give you a definition of digital impressions, but as I say, we'll talk about this in great detail. And if we think about what a digital impression is and what a digital workflow is, um, if you can imagine in days gone by, we would be taking impressions with silicon putty, with alginate. Um, some of you may have even taken it with plaster of Paris. I only ever saw it once as a student. Anyway, we'd take an impression um, the traditional way and there are various pros and cons about doing it that way however these days what we do in our practice is well I use a prime scan and then with my digital impression I will then either send that to one of these which is Jack who's going to talk to you later he's a technician uh, and that uh, works very, very well. And I'll talk in more detail about how that works later, or I'll send my digital impression to one of these. And this is the Prime Mill, um, which uh, Dent Supply Serona launched earlier this year. And I was actually very lucky to be in Berlin earlier this year at the launch. And I have to say, once I saw the Prime Mill in the flesh, so to speak, um, yes, I, I just got really excited, but I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, this is an example of um, the things that we have in our practice. All of the equipment we have is Dent Supply Serona, apart from there is a Form Labs printer up there, which I'm, I'll, I'll mention printers again later because we have some other very exciting solutions for printers coming up. Um, we have an Orthofos SL, CBCT, takes very, very nice pictures. We use it every day. We have a couple of the Serona or Dent Supply Serona Speedfire furnaces. We have at the moment one prime scan and we have three other AC units. They were the Omnicam. So we have four acquisition units. Uh, we've got a couple of mills, the MCXLs, and as I said, we had a printer. But as I was saying before, when I went to Berlin, I saw the prime mill and that was the look on my face. I was so excited. I don't get out much. Um, it could have almost been COVID, but there we are. And the prime mill uh, has been launched, uh, as I said earlier this year. And actually, on Friday this week, we are taking delivery of what I call the three amigos. So we're getting a prime mill, another prime scan to add to the ones we already have, and uh, the new Speedfire 2 furnace. And I'm very excited about it. Um, as I said, I don't get out much, but there we are. So, um, as I said, we've got to whistle through th things pretty quickly here. So my apologies if um, I seem to be going quite quickly. I am. So, in our practice, we manufacture most of our crowns, most of our bridges, most of our implant crowns, uh, but we do a lot of digital impressions which we send to the laboratory, which I'll talk about again later. So if we're just doing a normal 
crown, whatever that is. Uh, at the moment, we book a 90 minute appointment. And during that 90 minute appointment, the first 30 minutes, as it says there, we do our preparation and we do our intraoral scanning or our digital impressions. Um, Pre-COVID, the patient would go into the waiting room. Uh, they may go for a walk. They may have a cappuccino, not in the practice. Uh, they may go and see the hygienist and that, that, that can be quite a useful uh, use of their time and ours. Um, as it says there, COVID-19, we're, we're still working around that at the moment. Um, but again, I'll come back to that later as well. Um, it says there it takes about 35 to 40 minutes to manufacture the crown. The reality is this, it's often less than that. The milling time can be anything from five to 20 minutes or a little bit longer if we're doing say a three unit bridge. Um, but again, that is getting quicker with the new prime mill. And then we allow about 10 minutes to fit the crown. And that would be a typical appointment. Very straightforward and the, pay, the benefits of the patient um, are significant. So in terms of acquisition, how easy is it? Uh, here you will see I am taking some pictures. Um, this was taken a while ago, actually, and with the software updates, the image acquisition is really, really quick and really easy. Um, Prime Scan is very good at editing out things like lips, tongues. It distinguishes very well between gold and chrome dentures. Um, as I say, very straightforward, very, very quick indeed. So once we've taken our um, digital impression, as I said, we can either send it to the laboratory or we can send it to our mill. Now on the screen at the moment, you can see just a very small selection of the materials that are available to us. Uh, one of the things that stopped me many years ago about doing things digitally was the limited amount of materials. I was aware that um, digital crowns fit really well, but um, they looked terrible. You know, they look like chewing gum. However, with the materials that we've got available these days, they can look really, really good. Um, for those of you that are interested, um, we do speak quite a lot about the business aspects of digital dentistry, not, not very much tonight, but an I-12 block, which is the size of a block that you would use to do most single crowns, premolars, incisors, quite a few molars, cost you about £15, and that's for lithium disilicate, which is a very, very nice material. Bigger blocks for bigger crowns, as it says there, £15 to £25, and a block for a bridge, uh, may, maybe £50 for a good one and we always use good ones but just put that to the back of your mind because that that's quite relevant and um, quite useful information so in terms of the manufacturing process as I said we do pretty much all our crowns ourselves we've chosen our material we've designed our crown I'm not going to go into how we do that we haven't got time and then the design is sent to the mill and as it says there the mill it'll take between five and 25 minutes to mill the restoration Okay, um, five minutes or less now for a lithium disilicate crown. It's really, really quick. There was a time we would say lithium disilicate start to finish 90 minutes. You could probably do it in an hour and 10 minutes. Uh, for me, that just means more time checking my emails. Um, for some people who are a little younger than me that really need to work quickly, if they wish, then it gives them more chair time I guess but um, that kind of defeats the object of what we're trying to do in some ways. So um, just a few examples of what we can do as you can see this um, lower right first molar uh, it's a lithium disilicate crown quite a few years ago we've done that looks exactly the same now you can see there's a supra gingival margin there but I made that myself I am not a technician uh, Jack will be nodding his head in a minute in agreement um, but you'd be surprised on the quality of the crowns that you can make yourself um, this is an upper right central that I did um, max matching the colors there was quite interesting um, but again I think I was quite happy with that. That was one of the earliest ones I did several years ago. And again, a bit of a comparison here between um, some old bonded crowns and um, some lithium disilicate crowns. You can see on the left hand side, we've got a second premolar and molar, and then we've got a second molar with an old bonded crown. And on the right side, you've got a premolar with a old bonded crown and then a super gingival molar. And, you know, this is, it's really straightforward, very, very simple. And with the right training and you need less training than you might think to do this, 
um, you can produce some really nice results. So um, as well as, as I said, doing most of our own crowns and bridges, we do most of our single unit uh, implant crowns as well. Um, and again, I can't go into any details there, but if we just for a moment think of the implant workflow, um, for those of us that do them, and many do these days, we might start with a CBCT. Um, we use the planning software, the Galileo software from um, Dennis Blyserona, which is really good and really easy to use to plan our uh, fixture placement. And we're also able to uh, manufacture either print or mill our surgical guides. Similarly, if we're not into that, we can just email through the appropriate software all of this information to Jack in my case and they can design and make the guides as well um, so if you don't really fancy making your own things DI digital impressions great way of doing this quickly and accurately um, after we've put the fixture in obviously uh, we'll have a, a similar workflow to when we do conventional crowns and bridges we do the preparation well that's actually just a scan really uh, we'll design it ourselves on the prime scan, uh, we'll send off the design to the mill and then we'll manufacture it and fit it. And again, yeah, it's about 90 minutes to make an implant crown. Uh, straightforward, um, again, with some training, it's surprisingly easy to do that. Um, great, and then just an example here, this gives you a little hint as to what goes on when we're designing implant crowns. You can see in the lower pictures, that's what the software looks like when we are um, designing the crowns and manufacturing them. On the right hand side, you can see, I deliberately for the purposes of this photo, put uh, two different lengths of scan posts and scan bodies in there. So obviously if we have some deeper um, placed fixtures, we can get around that with different lengths of scan posts. And then on the left, we've got a couple of premolars in there. Again, that would have taken me about an hour and a half from start to finish to manufacture. And then we've got um, an upper left lateral here and that literally had been put in two minutes before I took the photograph. So you can see the condition of the gingival margin. And as it said there, in this case, one visit to make the crown, no impressions. And it is really, really efficient. Very simple, happy patient, uh, happy. Happy Simon as well. Okay. Um, so, as I said, we make most of our crowns and bridges, but, and this is the thing that really excites me, we are doing more and more digital impressions now uh, using the Prime Scans, and we have the Dense Fly Serena Connect software. So, very, very straightforward. We do whatever we're going to do to our patient, and we take an impression. So if I'm going to do a partial immediate denture, I just take digital impressions of the upper and lower jaw, do a bite registration. Again, that's just some pictures and that is emailed to the laboratory and the laboratory will have that, well, seconds after I've taken the impressions. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to steal Jack's thunder here, but the advantages of that are enormous. Okay, so just to give you an example, keep pressing the wrong button, of the things that you, you can do and we do, you can do single implant crowns, we do study models, um, Jack has made me a very nice gum shield recently, um, we do arch bars, uh, we do Michigan splints, and we're now doing partial dentures. And you can do chromes, you can do acrylic, you can do immediates. And the great thing about this is one visit for impressions and you can go straight to finish. And there are even now workflows that we're looking at. We haven't started doing them yet for full dentures. So it's, it's quite exciting. So it's quite incredible what you can do with digital impressions. Um, I always say when I'm talking, um, something, there we go. Um, I sit in, a lot of lectures and I look at the work that people talk about and they say oh look at this it's marvellous and it is marvellous and I, I'm always conscious that I don't want people to think well I couldn't possibly do that because I frequently do when I sit in lectures and the reality is that most of what we do every day is routine dentistry crowns bridges single fixtures and we do it every day as I say, but we do it digitally. However, we do do some larger cases, and this is just an example of some pictures of the workflow, um, eight fixtures, 
uh, 12 teeth and this is something that Jack made for me and was fitted recently and it was lovely and the reality is one lot of impressions and we went straight to finish and the great thing about the prime scan is full arch impressions are incredibly accurate you couldn't do that with any of the other scanners whereas with prime scan you can do full arch scanning so full arch cases like this full arch bars really really accurate and uh, so easy so easy it's quite incredible um so whistling through again um hopefully you can see we you can do just about everything now digitally so you know are there any benefits to this absolutely there are um patients well they love impressions don't they not um they they hate them uh, i do have a funny video which i've shown in other things which um, we, we, i won't be showing tonight but impressions are horrible so of course they don't have them um patients are actually very very impressed with the technology we we do actually have new patients coming to the practice now because we're digital they see it on our website web our website and our website and um they they like the fact that we're technology we have this technology talk about remote technician cam again and jack will be talking about this later but communications with the laboratory are so much quicker and so much better doing things this way as it said there one visit if you're manufacturing your own crowns it's done in a single visit is that a good thing absolutely lots of good reasons people's time is precious one less journey in a car um etc etc um no temporary temporaries we all love making temporaries don't we they cause problems um it says they're easier remakes you hardly have to do them but the reality is if you've got a shade half wrong half an hour later you can have replaced it with the correct shade it is extremely accurate um we don't need to adjust them at all and i've talked about covid19 there again from a cross infection point of view think about fallow times and things like that it's built in to a digital appointment it's really really easy to get your fallow time whether it be 15 minutes or whatever it is you need to do as i say it's built in there for you so that that's very helpful um so trying to sorry just uh, wrestling with my uh, screen at the moment so why do I like it? Well, again, no impressions. I've talked about the accuracy. When I started doing these things quite a few years ago now, I was amazed at just how good the marginal fit was. Um, again, cross infection, um, it's not a problem. You, you can use the tips on this are autoclavable or they're wipeable, we don't wipe them, or they're disposable. That's a good thing. As I said, the instant communication with the laboratory, when I'm doing digital impressions for dentures, Michigan splints, gum shields, implants arch bars they will get those impressions literally seconds after i've taken the impressions and done the detail uh, or written the prescription um, if you're making things yourself it talks about uh, i talk about a flexible working day a bit more difficult at the moment where we are in our country with covid but you know we will come out the other end of this um hopefully sometime next year and um the girls at reception know that half an hour into a 90 minute appointment the chances are we've cleaned down the surgery i've designed the crown uh, the girls are making the crown which i'll come to in a moment and i could probably see an extra patient so again it gives us some flexibility um i like making crowns i like making bridges it's very satisfying making things that look good as it said at the bottom there is creative and i think i think dentists are quite creative people um why do the team like it well that's amy uh, one of the nurses who has the misfortune to work with me pretty much every day and amy and some of our other nurses have been trained to make the crowns so obviously i do the clinical work i do the designing uh, but they manufacture them they do the tints they do the glazing uh, we talk about tints we used to talk about stains on tea on, on crowns and patients don't like it when you talk about stains so tints and they are very very good at it um they love it again no impressions same old thing isn't it no impressions no mess no alginate no silicon no heaving patients again the flexibility in the diary is great one the crown is being manufactured depending on how you work if you're an old git like me um when the crown's being manufactured by amy or one of the other girls um i can do something else i could see a patient and sometimes i do or i could just have a cup of tea or i could do some emails and that's that's where the day becomes really really flexible 
and down at the bottom there it says you know it's out of the ordinary well at the moment it is but you know things are changing and for those of you that are thinking about doing this the first thing i would say is you absolutely must because in 10 to 15 years everyone else will be so you need to be doing it and you need to be doing it really well because it will be normal for those of you that are sort of where i am perhaps 10 to 15 years to go in your career you should also do it because actually it's such an easy and accurate and really satisfying way of working so still trying to move on so just very quickly a few other benefits um we actually get referrals from other dentists but we are specialists and we're also general practitioners but patients that can't tolerate impressions we get referrals for that from uh, other practices and the patient goes back once they've had it done i say there there are significant financial benefits so that's another whole lecture but our practice is 25 percent more profitable directly as a result of doing things digitally. And that's massive. Um, just some numbers there. If you look at what you pay for your laboratory work, then you know you need to think about this. And that's not to say I don't send Jack lots and lots of work because I send him loads of things. Because as I said earlier, we can do everything digitally now. So yes, two appointments to finish a denture rather than four fantastic michigan splints gum shields yada yada i've said it all before you can do anything now um covid19 maybe there's some light at the end of the tunnel but certainly single visits social distancing think about the environmental benefits of digital dentistry jack will talk in more detail about that but there's no impression materials there's no stone models um you hardly use anything it's quite incredible. It's all electronic, it's all digital. Um, we talked about the fallow times earlier. Um, there are benefits to making your own crowns. Many of you will do that. Uh, many of you won't do that, in which case the digital impression is, is, a, is a great way to work. And also the relationship with your laboratory actually gets even better if you're doing things digitally because the lead time is so much quicker. Again, Jack will talk about that. It's just so much more efficient. So sorry to have gone through things so quickly. As I said, I spend a whole day talking about lots of different aspects here. But digital impressions, uh, digital dentistry has completely transformed my practice and everybody's benefited from it. I've benefited from it as the practice owner. My patients, they absolutely love it. They no longer dread having to have impressions. Um, and the staff really love it as well. And, and if I say to them, well, do you fancy going back? They give me a funny look and think I'm just, they feel a bit sorry for me perhaps because I'm getting old, but obviously we won't be going back. Um, and again, thinking of the laboratory side of things, um, it's, as I said, it's just so much more efficient. They have the information instantly. It is incredibly accurate information. In the real world, digital impressions are way more accurate you will then silicon and alginate because you don't have blood and saliva and gagging patients to deal with and as it said there in red we can do now the full range of prosthetics um the advances now that are coming through with printers i mean uh, another company that produces a very interesting printer is dmg um we have um, a form labs printer at the moment and it's just not done what i want it to so looking around these other printers that are coming through are looking very very exciting so printing being able to manufacture more things yourself that looks very exciting but also if you have a printer on site you can send your digital impression to the laboratory they can design it but then they send it back and you print it on site that is now possible and uh, think about the efficiencies there anyway i've gone over so i'm going to get um a wrap on the knuckles so my apologies for that i hope this sort of 20 or so minutes whistle stop tour has been helpful to you you can see my email address is at the bottom there please do contact me i do have a lot of people contact me and um, you know ask questions later or contact me um and uh, i'm very happy to talk to you and also we have a lot of people visit us at the practice if you ever want to come and see us see what we do come and see us and uh, we're very happy to welcome you. Uh, thank you very much for now.
Thank you very much, Simon. Uh, no, don't worry about the, the timings. I know obviously we, we were giving you quite a strict um, time limit there, so don't worry about it. It's, um, I just want to say before I move on, uh, congratulations in advance for your uh, your Prime Scan, uh, Prime Mill and Speedfire going in on Friday. <laughs> I can see you're very excited. <laughs> well, it's, it's as I said, it's, it's it's just adding to the stock, really. I mean, we, we, we just, as you know, we do everything digitally and uh, the prime scan and all that. It just works brilliantly. So we had to get another one. Fantastic. Well, um, shortly I'll actually be jumping over to my own prime scan that I have set up next to me because we're going to be doing a live scan on a model soon. Uh, but before we do that, um, I'd just like to move into this section we call how to pick the right scanner. Um, because obviously, you know, you've seen the equipment that Simon has in his practice, you've seen what works for him. Um, obviously, you've, you've got a lot of options out there, but what are some of the things that you should take into account when you're looking at this type of equipment? Um, now, I would say, you can see it on screen, the first thing we should consider when it comes to um, choosing the right digital impression scanner um, for your practice um, really should be the speed of it. Um, so I think when you're out there, um, if you're able to, I know obviously we're in a sort of we're, we're in the second lockdown at the moment, but if it is possible, obviously within the next um, few weeks, the next few months, if you are seriously looking at this type of equipment, um, it's a really good idea to get an idea of how fast the scanning is, how quickly it can keep up with your hand scanning. Um, and the reason for that is because, you know, unlike in a lab, which Jack may have, um, where a model is placed onto an extra oral scanner, and then it's perfectly sort of spun around and scanned from every direction. Um, scanning intraorally isn't an exact science because we're relying on the human hand and the human arm to take that scanner around the mouth. And um, so what that can result in is a lot of erratic movements, a lot of quick movements where the camera can quite easily lose its tracking and it can be quite frustrating with some systems when it comes to getting that scanner to line back up with somewhere you've already scanned and to pick back up. We'll look at that when we look, go into the demo and how the prime scan keeps up with that. But, you know, I think this is definitely something you should take into account. This speed's not everything, but when it comes to ease of use, a lot of that ease of use is going to come from the speed and how quickly it can keep up um, with your hand. Um, so what I would say is when you're testing a scanner, obviously test on a model. Um, I imagine that would be the first thing um, that you'd want to scan. But if possible, um, if you can also try that scanner um, on one of your assistants, like a nurse, um, or if you've got another uh, associate or colleague that you can scan, um, because get things obviously you can scan much better on a model, but it's when it comes to the mouth, obviously, um, that's the true test. So uh, when it comes to other things we should take into account is uh, arguably just as important, but you know, is the actual accuracy. Now, regardless of how quick it, how little time it takes us to take the impression, um, ultimately this is, you know, the, the accuracy of the model is what we're gonna be left with. Um, and this is the whole point of getting a digital impression scanner. Um, if this was a less um, accurate way of taking impressions versus traditional impression material, um, which um, absolutely some scanners out there um, are less accurate um, than traditional impression material, um, that's obviously not ideal. When we're moving into the digital realm, we're looking to make improvements on every aspect um, of, of the workflow of taking impressions. Um, so the accuracy should definitely be um, a big consideration. Um, and it's measured in both trueness and precision. And what that means essentially um, is that when you take a scan, as Simon mentioned previously, um, it just means that you have far less remakes um, because you have a really accurate impression. Um, any restorations that are designed digitally by the lab um, are almost guaranteed to just fit, um, which is why the accuracy is so key. Uh, and by all means, the accuracy um, varies massively between scanners. Uh, next is the overall ease of use. Again, I think this should be a massive consideration because this is going to be something, you know, even if we think not even at Simon's level, but even for beginners, it very, very quickly um, becomes something that is in your hand all day. Um, if you think how many impressions you're taking, um, that is how many times you're going to be using the scanner throughout the day. So it needs to be something that you're comfortable using. You don't want it to be clunky. Um, if we look at scanners, I'm, I'm sure people have been exposed to scanners in some way over the last 20 odd years. Um, 
scanners even 10 years ago, uh, even some scanners in 2020 um, aren't so easy to use. Um, for example, if we look at some from 10 years ago and above, again, still some out there today like this, um, some of them require powder to be sprayed onto the teeth in order to require a scan. That's, that essentially is to get rid of any reflectivity off the teeth uh, to ensure that the, the scanner can actually see the surface it's trying to scan. Um, some of them could only image one tooth at a time or one image at a time. You would only scan maybe a few teeth at a time for an impression, um, possibly manually taken with each photo. Um, so that kind of thing is really uh, belonging to the past um, in 2020. Um, a modern day scanner should be able to scan any surface, regardless of how reflective it is, without powder and in full colour. Um, and potentially a lot of features you'll have with scanners, especially the prime scan I've got next to me, is the ability to take a shade reading as well as part of that scan. Um, something to consider as well is not just the actual um, cart that it comes with or, or format that the scanner comes in, but it's actually the handpiece is a big thing to consider when it comes to the ease of use because you know they're not the, the largest things in the world, but they're also not the smallest. So when we compare them to your traditional dental um, instruments, they're obviously going to be much, much bulkier than that. Um, and we're still taking this inside the patient's mouth. Um, you're going to be battling with soft tissues. Um, they often get in the way when you're scanning. I'm sure Simon will tell you how much patients' tongues love to um, just lick the, uh, the end of the scanner. I'm sure you encounter that every day. Uh, but you need essentially a scanner which, which is easy enough to use in the fact that it is able to cut that out automatically if any soft tissue gets into the scan. Um, now, coming back onto the body of the scanner, um, because the scanner isn't just a self-contained unit, it, it's always connected to something, whether or not that's a sort of more portable device or if it's um, a cart-based system, um, that is something you should really consider um, because that essentially is going to be where the camera lives. Um, if we're talking about things like laptops, um, laptops, as we all know, aren't registered medical devices. Um, they shouldn't really be bought within about a meter and a half of a patient. Um, so this is something you should take into consideration when you're looking at a scanner, is the actual format of the scanner. Um, it's much easier, um, looks much better actually if we have a cart where we can just push it away, bring it to us when it's needed, and then um, when we don't need it, it just tucks nicely away in the corner. Uh, now, again, when we've taken a scan, ultimately the, the purpose of this is to send either to, as Simon said, um, an in-house milling machine or over to a lab um, or service provider. Um, and if that is the ultimate destination of the scan, um, you know, we need to have ideally some sort of dedicated portal um, designed for sending these scans safely and securely um, to there. Um, I can use quite a few examples of um, some, some things that are quite popular to use within the dental industry, stuff like WeTransfer, Really, really useful websites um, for data transfer, absolutely. But when we're taking so many scans a day with so many different dentists and a lab is receiving all of those, we're trying to communicate about each individual case um, through WhatsApp, through email, over the phone. We all know how difficult it can be to manage that amount of communications. Something that ties everything in together. So for example, a piece of software where we take a scan that software then has a dedicated portal which encrypts the files safely, so you know the data is secure, then sends directly over to the lab um, without the need to do any of that. Also, the ability to chat to the lab um, through that application um, is just going to make everything much, much tidier um, and be much more efficient um, for everybody's workflows, really. So that's something you should consider um, when you're looking into um, equipment as well as the possibility to link it um, with Mini Machine in a few years' time. Um, it, it would definitely be something to consider. Don't, don't limit yourself by a decision you make uh, now, if milling is potentially uh, on the cards for a few years' time. Um, when it comes to the training and education, um, as easy as um, we as manufacturers intend our devices to be, um, training obviously always needs to be provided, uh, especially within dentistry. Uh, and being clinician led is absolutely the best way. So always check what the support is like with the manufacturer um, and supplier that you're purchasing the equipment from. Um, also some things to consider um, are updates, 
check if there's any license fees, is there any charge for software updates, um, and is there any kind of self-help um, if you're unable to get hold of somebody quickly. Um, when it comes to service and support, um, again, manufacturers um, would hope that there's never any issues with um, any equipment. Um, however, if they do appear, um, for whatever reason, you need that security there. Um, make sure you choose a trusted manufacturer that's got a lot of experience um, within the field, uh, is well recognised um, and has a good um, service and support network um, established already. Uh, and I would say to add on to that, make sure you have um, some sort of hotline um, for tech support um, or a local rep who you can contact for any questions. So those are some things to consider. Um, obviously, keep all of those things in mind when you're making your decision. Um, now, when it comes to scanning, Dense by Serona is um, an absolutely huge um, player uh, in scanning. Um, and as you saw in Simon's presentation earlier, with the Prime Scan, um, we actually set a new milestone in scanning. Uh, this, is, this is sort of a next generation scanner, um, which is really pushing the limits of what scanners are able to do. Um, so if, if you please bear with me, I'm just going to be a few moments. Um, I'm just going to move over to my prime scan shortly um, and I'll continue presenting from there and I'll be able to show you a live scan. Um, the, the prime scan uh, looks like this. Um, so I'm going to be sat in front of this shortly. Um, you can see it's got a massive touch screen, um, which is useful, one, for you interacting um, on screen with your scans but also help, helping you to communicate better with your patient, allowing them to look over uh, their scans, their ortho scans and simulations. Uh, it's really useful as a patient communication tool. Um, so that's what the overall cart looks like. Um, it's very sleek and elegant. Uh, bear with me two seconds. I'm just gonna move over to that and I will pick up shortly. So I should be back. So I've not got a virtual background on. I'm just checking everybody can hear me okay. Jack and Simon, come here through clear. Fantastic, cheers. <laughs> so I've not got a virtual background on because I wanted to show you some props that I'm using. It um, interferes a little bit with that. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen so you can see uh, what I am sharing, uh, what, what I'm seeing in front of me. So I'm inside the uh, Dense by Serena Connect software. Um, and when I was talking about bits of software earlier that allow you to easily take a scan and send directly to a lab, um, all safely and securely and communicate through there. And this is essentially what enables us to do that. Uh, and this comes included to, um, with the prime scan. So it really is as simple as entering a patient. So I've just added a new patient here. And uh, we brought Johnny Cash back from the desk. Um, so what we can do at this stage now is we can indicate to the technician, this is completely optional, um, but it saves us time when it comes to the uh, notes at the end. Um, we don't even have to type any of this because it's as simple as touching. Um, so I've got a model as an example here, which has got a single uh, premolar prep there. What I can do, I can either skip straight to the scanning or I can click on that tooth. Um, I could let um, my technician, Jack, as an example, uh, know that I would like this restored, uh, let's just say for an example, zirconia. Um, and it saves me actually having to type that at the end. So it's completely optional, but we can indicate that there. We then hit next and move into the impression. So uh, we pick the prime scan camera up. <clears throat> it's motion activated, so it centers when you lift it up. There's the camera. You can see on screen what it's seeing. Uh, and it comes into focus only when it's very, very close. So to start the scan, it really is as simple as taking the camera over the tooth like that. And that's how we start the impression. Now, to give you an idea of the speed and how quickly it can keep up with my hand, um, I'm just gonna scan full arch there. Now I wouldn't necessarily need to scan uh, the full arch. I'm just doing this uh, for demonstration purposes. Um, a quadrant would be completely fine for this. But you can see within, I mean, even about 10 seconds, um, I was able to capture nearly all of the information on that arch. Um, any bits of information we've missed um, are highlighted um, as little missing bits of, uh, of data there. You can see just like a, a tear in the scan. Um, and to fill that in, it really is as simple as taking the camera back over an area, 
putting a slight angle on it just so that the camera can see into those spaces. And as soon as it looks at it, you'll just see it stitching um, on the screen. Now, overall, um, I don't have to get absolutely everything, um, but what is going to be important is around this preparation uh, and those interproximal contact areas. And you can see they're completely filled in. That's completely fine. So now I can click on the upper jaw. I'm just going to grab my upper jaw model and I continue the scan here. Now, I mentioned earlier about soft tissues and the ease of use um, of the software. Now, the software is intelligent enough to recognize soft tissue. Um, and the, the way that the software does that is by recognizing that teeth in a scan won't move, but soft tissue uh, will. So if we scan soft tissue and then rescan an area with it gone, it will cut it out. Um, and to demonstrate that, I'm just going to use my thumb in place of a tongue as an example. You can see my thumb on screen there. Now, uh, in the past, uh, I'm with some scanners, you would have to delete this whole scan if you noticed there was um, a big bit of tongue in the way or a big bit of uh, a cheek. Um, now, what this is able to do with the prime scan is if we move that out of the way and just scan over that area again, it will just automatically eat that out of the scan because it recognises that it shouldn't be there. Now, if I, even if I reintroduce that tongue or my thumb, uh, and scan back over that area, it will just reject it from the scan. So you can see it's just refusing to put it back into the scan. Um, so it's a very, very intelligent software. Um, and part of that is from the camera. So uh, I'll just finish off this scan here. Again, I wouldn't necessarily have to do a full arch, um, but I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. You can see with the prime scan how quick it is to do. Capture a bit of the palette. There we go. Now, all we have to do is get the patient to bite um, so we can take the bite registration. So to do that, patient bites down, we take the camera um, and it takes literally seconds for us to get a bite scan um, because what it's done here, is it already recognizes that we've scanned that upper and lower model or upper and lower jaw uh, and then it orients them together like that. And that's it, that's the whole scan done. And if I wanted to, I could take some intraoral pictures and videos, which would also be included in the scan. And I could send those over to Jack as well. Um, but I'm just going to click forwards. And now what will happen is my model. So if you think I've got thousands and thousands and thousands of images, I've got literally millions and millions of um, 3D contrast points. All of these are now being processed. Um, it's getting rid of everything it doesn't need. Um, processing the textures, the final shade. Um, so the scan will look even better in this next stage. Um, and that's where we look at the final impression. Just check we're happy with it. Um, we could trim bits of this out if we wanted to. Um, one of the huge benefits with a digital impression scanner is if we do notice any mistakes in this next stage, if something doesn't quite look right, um, or we notice there's a bit of blood in the scan um, around a vital area, um, like the preparation site, um, rather than taking the whole impression all over again, we can literally just come back into the scan, add a little bit more data to it and just process back into the stage, literally saving, um, you know, if, if we had to recast that whole impression up again, um, upwards of five minutes. And um, so there's a huge time saving there. So there's the final impression. Um, I'm just moving around this with my finger just so we can see how clear the margin looks uh, and those interproximal spaces. Um, any bits of missing information have just been filled in uh, in this sort of colour here just to indicate uh, it's the software's way of letting you know that that's just an approximation. We didn't actually fill it in. If we want to fill it in, we just come back to acquisition. So we can check both the models there, um, check we're happy. When we are happy, um, we can go forwards, click connect, uh, click login. Once we're logged in, um, I'll already have um, my favorite technicians listed. I can add any at any time. But along the bottom, you can see this is now uploading to the cloud and it takes around half a minute. Um, once it's in the cloud, uh, or even as it's been uploaded to the cloud, um, I can actually enter in my order details. So it doesn't waste any extra time uploading, which is really, really nice. You don't have to wait for slow internet connection. Um, so I can just select here. So we've got Jack Leaves Lab here, which is Octopus Dental. I could say, I could be very kind to Jack and I could ask for this back in uh, let's say a few weeks time, giving plenty of time to work on it. Um, if I had any notes to give him, 
nothing is physical anymore. So we could say, hi, Jack, um, dot, dot, dot. We could put whatever we wanted in there. It's all contained within the, in the file itself. Now it's uploaded to the cloud. So it already exists in the cloud. There's nothing else we need to wait for. As soon as we're ready to hit go, we just hit submit cart. Um, just verify that with our password once more. Um, and that now is instantly with Jack. Um, and that's as simple as it is. That was the whole impression process um, done that quickly. So bear with me again. I'm just going to move over to uh, back to my laptop to resume this, this slide. So again, bear with me a few seconds. So I'll just share that again. And then um, Jack and Simon, if you could give me a thumbs up if that's looking good. Yep, fantastic. Uh, so what Jack will have on his side is the Connect Case Center inbox. It's a piece of software that with every purchase of the Prime Scan, um, you get a license for this to give to your lab. A lot of labs at this point are already set up with this. Um, but uh, Jack has it on his side. Um, so on that note, I would like to hand over to Jack. Thanks, Jack. Cheers, bud. I'll just share my screen now. Okay. Is that okay? Can you see everything okay? Yeah, that's good. Perfect. Perfect. I literally got the ping on my phone there and case received, so that's all good. Cheers, Jack. And it literally is that, that quick and simple. Um, I just want to say thanks, everybody, for attending tonight, and thanks, Dentify Serona, for allowing us to, to do this. So... With the, I'll just take you through a few um, points on the Case Connect Center. As I said earlier, we have the digital impression sent over. We get an instant notification uh, on our phone, which is great. If I'm not at the design computer or if I'm, you know, out of the laboratory, I know what's coming in. Really, uh, I already, I already know that there's a case we're waiting for me, so I need to to get a move on and work on it. Not only that, we have um, a lot of information as well. So on this one, we know Simon's asked for some Essex retainers uh, and he's also give us a return date as well. And we can also pre 3D pre preview the scan. So that allows us to see, like Jack said, if there's any data missing, we can kindly ask Simon to, to rescan if needed. Um, with us both being able to see this, it's, it's a physical check. It's um, quality control even before we started the case really. So um, it's a nice little touch. We also have the chat box. Uh, this is a two-way communication directly to, to client and, and technician. Um, none of this Chinese whispers anymore going between the laboratory, the receptionist, the dentist and coming back. You know, we're not, we're not waiting for any instructions. We've got everything there. And if you look on this, this um, case, Simon's actually asked me to look at the scan to, to look at the characterizations. So automatically, I know what I'm looking for um, before before starting the case. The other nice little touch is um, the additional files which can attach as well. So on this one, we have a smile design, but this can be anything. This could be um, preoperative models. It could be some old orthodontic models which are scanned in, um, and just anything really which can add value to to what we're doing. Uh, we also have. Um, the Case Connect Center ticket here. This is what we print off in the laboratory as a physical ticket. And um, it just helps us really just to know where the case is going uh, and what we're doing. And there's no mindless information like you would on a lab ticket either, such as phone number or um, address. We, we've got all that there. Um, it saves the dentist from, from filling that in. So, um, so yeah, it really is that simple. So we can just click accept and we're ready to go then. Um, so a little bit about ourselves. So we're Octopus Dental Laboratory based in Cornwall. It's myself and my brother, Neil, as directors. And um, we've worked in some really good laboratories in the UK and we're really fortunate. And so it was a natural progression for us to decide to start our own laboratory. But at the same time, I decided to live the Cornish dream and moved to Cornwall with my young family. And we went forward with a laboratory, but there was 
a couple of small issues that we needed to get over. The first one was Neil was 300 miles away. Um, and as business partners going into a venture together, especially a dental laboratory, where a lot of the work's physical, um, you know, we needed to uh, really think about which way we were going and what we were going to do. Um, so we needed to look at digital solutions, really, and what that offered for us. So here we are, very fortunate, very close to the beach. The little green man there is where Neil was. Um, with his laptop and his uh, design tablet. And um, we just decided really that we needed digital technology. And we, um, so we just progressed a little bit. And then we was out walking one day and um, in summertime, you know, we have this big influx of visitors in Cornwall and uh, anyone who's been to visit Cornwall in peak season will know the A30 is like a car park. Um, in winter time, it's ghost town. So for it to be a viable business, we needed to have a steady income of cases, really. Um, this beach in particular, there was a sign there when I was walking past and it was both Colonel and near the Minnick Theatre. And it was one of the first places in the UK to ever be connected to anywhere in the world via fiber optic cables, which are hidden under the beach there, um, even to India, stretching across. Uh, so I thought, if the Victorians can do it, then, uh, then we'll give it a go. So we started to look at the process, really, of, of an analog lab. We didn't have the time, and also we, we, couldn't, we couldn't progress with the analog stages being you know, far apart as well. We, we had interchangeable skills that we needed to utilize as, as partners. So we, we started to look at the, the process map. Um, also, we looked at the waste as well. But you can see here, we've got analog impressions going through to disinfectant stage. I mean, this is quite a, quite a good, good uh, little show at the minute because with COVID, we don't really want, you know, any, uh, any cross infection in the laboratory whatsoever. Um, you know, we looked at um, transport as well. Cornwall's not necessarily got the best transportation links as far as delivery and um, receiving which goes. So we looked also, uh, we needed to be connected to our digital partners as well. So that includes um, milling centers. We also looked at the waste. Uh, you know, we're in Cornwall, we don't even, we have a ban on plastic straws. So, you know, ecological, uh, factors and quite close to us really. So we looked, and, and this is only touching the surface, there's so much saving which can be done by um, staying away from analog, especially impressions. We looked at the process map afterwards and it really is this simple, you know, we cut out all that waste just by being able to receive digital scans directly into the Case Connect inbox. Um, For us, was to be able to design and run a business while both business partners are at a distance, it was really uh, something that hit home to us. So we decided to go down this stage. Another good factor is um, this, I call it the, the dripping tap. So cases are, are almost drip fed to us on a, on a daily basis. We're not waiting for the postman to arrive with a big bag of impressions. We're not having to wait for couriers. Um, also delays or, or lost in post. Um, we literally, we can pick these cases off a conveyor belt, as you will, uh, the minute that they come in. So we can start to design. This really increases lead time. Um, and it cuts off roughly around three days. Uh, that's depending if things don't get lost in the post. So, uh, you know, this, this could really work for us, we thought. Um, we looked at several design um, studios, really, what we could work with. Um, and we chose to go for, a, for these ones here. Um, three Shape, Exacad and InLab. Exacad, we've got a direct link to Sonic um, Prime Scan. So there's no messing around, really, with different file formats, STLs, DCMs. We can go straight in and there's no messing around. It allows us just to seamlessly get on with the case. So as technicians, that's what we like. This is um, 
a little picture of, of designing. So we're using here the design tablet, really. We're putting a bit of artistry license back into to dentistry rather than trying to do everything with a mouse. Um, that allows us to customize even these teeth for you know, bespoke ceramic layering. Um, and then it's just a case of when we get this back, exactly what we mill is exactly what we've designed. We can also pass the designs on then to our digital partners, um, depending on which route we choose to take. We can have frameworks going to Densify Serona Atlantis, or we can mill in house Zirconia, or as you see on the mill here, some PMMA uh, in slow motion. Um, and it allows us to um, decide really and collaborate with different partners. In Cornwall, we needed to be. Um, we needed we needed them direct links that so we needed the digital link really so what we did here we've sent it off to Densify Serona Atlantis and we've uploaded it up to the the Case Connect Center as well and then what we've received back is what's known as a core file um, a core file is a digital representation of the abutment that we've made which starts to allow us to design anything that we choose to on top, whether that be a zirconia crown, a lithium disilicate, a gold crown, and that sort of cuts down the, the lead time. What we can do is bring them two things together and, and then we can glue them together, if you will. So we have a custom base here from Atlantis and a zirconia crown. And the really exciting thing about this is the fit, the accuracy. Uh, there's no scanning abutments back in. Uh, the two things are made from the same STL file. And this cuts down on, on you know, the lead time. Again, we don't have to wait for anything. These two things come back roughly at the same time, or even quicker if we're going to mill the zirconia in-house. And what that allows us to do, that allows us to create, uh, sorry, concentrate on the, on the back end of the, the product. So I like to call it, you know, squeezing at one end. As technicians, we, you know, we like to show off a little bit and it, like Simon said, it's a, it's a creative uh, job to do. So the more time we have at the back end of, of the process and um, the better quality it's going to be, you know, we don't have to mess around casting impressions. Um, and for us, this was something that we needed to do starting out. Um, so you can see there, this is back from the milling centre and some individual crowns there. Another case we could do here is from um, a little digital impression. And what we can do is start to look firstly at our path of insertion. This is going to be for a little partial denture. The software here allows us to uh, look at our undercuts, look at our retention. Uh, and just for something so simple really, um, so we can just start to design this base, uh, print. Uh, it's just coming off the print bed there. And then you can see here, uh, I mean, this picture looks great. Uh, the opalescence coming through there, it's, it really is a lovely material there for a simple denture. What this does, this, this cuts out a lot of processing for us you know, we need to, to be time efficient. So what we did here, we, we printed the denture even before printing the model. And that is something that, you know, it's almost backwards in a sense for a laboratory. Normally that's the first thing we do is, is work off the master model. And we don't have this laborious lost wax technique anymore. Um, it's something in the laboratory that none of us really like doing. Um, there's numerous, um, deficiencies in, in flasking and packing, you know, raised bites. So what we did here was finish the, finish the base, then print the model, and these two just, just clip together. Uh, it really is quite simple. So another little thing we did, um, just to show that it's not always about the full arch cases. We can do, you know, routine dentistry with a little mouth guard for Simon here. Um, and that was just simply from a scan. We processed the, the model, printed, uh, did some vacuum forming and some graphics. Uh, and this is what we produced. 
and this is directly from a scan. Um, digital dentistry op opens us up to, you know, numerous different formats of of work. What we necessarily might have not started to begin with, orthodontics or dentures or uh, the big implant bridges. Um, it works quite well in in, in terms of business wise as well to um, promote to to clients. So here we have, and this is what it's all about really is happy patient, happy client. Um, and that's Neil on the beach. Neil's now down in Cornwall. And if it wasn't for uh, for digital dentistry, you know, we I don't think we would have been able to start the laboratory and, and uh, progress as we have really. So uh, there he is enjoying his barbecue all the way from 300 miles away. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's that's it really. But um, that's um, you know we're really fortunate to be able to use these technologies, and you know we see the scans as we as we do. So yeah, thanks. Thank you very much, Jack. Um, <laughs> great presentation. Um, <laughs> I would just also like to add, uh, I don't know if anyone caught Simon uh, give us a live try-in of that gun show. Oh, I, that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just uh, laughing to myself about that then. There we go. <laughs> it's, uh, it's all the training he's been doing. <laughs> <laughs> Looks amazing. Cool. Okay, so we're coming into the final sort of, uh, we've got 12 minutes left um, for this evening. Um, so I'm just going to go through uh the next part um just to add a few more things um before we get to the q a um so um first of all obviously we, we've heard a lot about the prime scan the intraoral scanner this evening um but i'd just like to make everybody aware that it's not the only digital impression solution that we have um, we still sell uh, the Omnicam AF. It's still fully supported and is going to receive future updates. We've gone as far as to put it on the brand new PrimeScan body, um, which you can see on screen there. Uh, and we've also got um, the Omnicam AF, which is uh, a unit which is uh, a solution for um, dentists who want to take one scanner between um, different sites um, or different levels in one building um, rather than have a, a cart based system. So you can see that on screen there. Um, the Prime Scan, we haven't really touched on this this evening, but um, it's also compatible um, with um, ortho aligners, uh, including Sure Smile, which is Dent Spicerona's own clear aligner service for patients wanting straighter teeth. And there is also an ortho simulator on the Prime Scan. Um, if that's something that you want, it's very effective as well. Um, it's pretty much got me to go ahead with Sure Smile aligner treatment, which is incredible. Um, so for implants, um, this is still um, a bit um, out there because it's uh, it's not fully validated yet. Um, we've got plenty of dentists doing this sort of workflow and you saw something from Simon earlier. Um, it's still currently a work in process before it gets uh, properly officially validated, which obviously it takes a lot of cases for something to, um, to get officially validated. Um, but you saw on Simon's presentation and, and in this picture here, um, which was kindly shared to us by Dr. Carlos Rapulo from Spain. Um, who's also been testing this sort of workflow with the Prime Scan, um, and there also is a patient monitoring tool for the Prime Scan called AuraCheck, um, which is very very useful because it measures any changes between scans um, in a patient's mouth, um, and that could include tooth wear. So you could identify a bruxist, uh, visibly show the patient um, evidence of that, which is I imagine could be extremely useful. You can also measure tooth movements, um, gum recession, plaque buildup. Um, it's a really, really useful um, tool and it's available for the Prime Scan as well. So uh, before we get into the Q&A, just to add a few bits on Dent Spicerona um, for those who are not aware. Um, so I don't know if this is news to anybody, but we are the largest global manufacturer, ma manufacturer of dental equipment and supplies all across the world. Um, in terms of um, our revenue, um, we have a revenue currently of about 4 billion US dollars. That was our most recent revenue uh, in 2019. And that is actually um, shared evenly all across the world. We're not Europe centric, we're not America centric. Um, this is spread evenly. Um, we're present in over 40 locations worldwide, headquartered in the US, 
um, but a lot of, well, in fact, most of our manufacturing um, takes place in Europe and Germany. Um, and in the UK, we're actually based in Surrey. Um, so just uh, on the southwestern part of the M25. Uh, and globally, we're a 15,000 um, strong team. Um, one of the proudest things that I have to say about Dentist West Serena is the amount that we invest into R&D. Um, we are one of the key innovators in the dental industry. Um, and we pour over $150 million a year um, into R&D just to advance dentistry. Um, and our R&D platform is actually the biggest as well in the industry um, with over 600 scientists and engineers. Uh, really proud to say that. So really, uh, we have a solution for every workflow and every customer need. And uh, part of our digital solutions span across um, digital implant workflows as well, um, with solutions like Azento, Simplant, um, as well as Atlantis and InLab, um, including uh, obviously our ortho platform as well, SureSmile. Um, and with that, everything you've seen tonight, um, I really hope you'll consider letting Dents by Serena be um, the partner on your own digital journey. Um, if anything has interested you tonight, um, please feel free to visit our website. You can click on that orange button there um, and that will take you to this page. You can click on any product um, and book a one-on-one -on -one consultation um, virtually or in person um, with um, any specialist for any of those products including myself if you want to see if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one consultation on digital impressions or single visit dentistry with CEREC and um, click on those and just click Jack Hannum and um, you could also have that with my colleague Simon Hughes as well. So uh, our time together is nearly at an end. Um, we've got another six minutes um, to go so that leaves us plenty of time for questions and um, thank you for those that have already submitted questions. We have answered um, some already. Um, however, if there are any more, I think there are some more that come through, um, we will address those. So I think um, just while we wait for a few to come through, let's read through some that have already been submitted. So if we come back to, the, there's a good one before, um, one from uh, Nicola, uh, which uh, who said, um, or who asked, how long would you say it takes to scan a full arch with the prime scanner in a patient's mouth? And I think this is a really good question for Simon, and um, so you can get a real take on, on his opinion. Yeah, as, on as um, Jack uh, was mentioning before, it's, it's a very quick scan on the prime scan, a million data points a second. So you've got the accuracy there. But I mean, I've seen a full arch done in 30 seconds, which is unusual, but a minute or so typically once you get used to doing it. And, and the great thing, the software is intelligent, so it, it, it edits a lot of things out. So yeah, a minute or so for one arch, you can do a full mouth, two, three minutes maybe. Um, yeah, really quite straightforward. It takes practice, but you know, in, in a normal um, dental practice, you'll be doing a lot of impressions. Fantastic. Uh, thank you for that, Simon. We had another question um, from uh, Jenny. Uh, who asked, um, what support for the practice um, do you provide after the purchase of the scanner? Um, so we are able to support in practice um, and virtually as well. Um, we can um, provide in-house training. Um, it's very, very easy actually to get to learn how to use the Prime Scan. Um, when it comes to people looking into more single visit dentistry with CEREC, there's obviously a bit more of a learning curve with that um, because you've got the whole material side of things and um, getting used to the machines and how the equipment works. Um, so there would be a two day new user course for that sort of thing. But for just the prime scan as a um, DR machine, we can support both in, in practice and, and remotely for that as well. Um, so uh, there's another question here, which was a nice one that came through from um, Abby. Um, and she's asked Simon and Jack, I assume this is for Jack G, Jack Cleave, um, what would you say is the biggest challenge with digital? Uh, sometimes from a laboratory point of view, if we're changing across different implant systems, it's sometimes um, the scan flags um, for picking up the, the, the digital flow. So what I'd say is to have a, a workflow with the 
uh, dentist and, and, and your technician and just to know which scan flags you're using. With um, dental flight, it's a little bit, little bit easier uh, with the Atlantis scan flows. There's um, one for um, nearly everything. So uh, yeah, that's, I'd say, that is the biggest challenge across other systems. Um, and I, sorry, go on, mate. Oh, uh, providing that you, you know, you you get that information, then there isn't really that much to 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 go wrong once you have that information. I I, ty I did type an answer. I was going to say pen an answer. I typed an answer to this, and and genuinely, it's true. Having done it for quite for a number of years now, it's actually genuinely realizing how much you can do i mean we really are start when i say we're pushing the boundaries i don't know that we are but for our country maybe we are and um, but to genuinely be able to do i mean we did a lot of implants and immediate partial denture with one lot of impressions and you go straight to finish um you know and have work returned <laughs> within 24 hours potentially as well and particularly in the future, being able to print things off ourselves. I mean, I, mean, I, I don't see us printing dentures, but as I said, it, it's it's actually realizing and having faith in how good the systems are. It, it, it's incredible. It really is, and I'm I'm learning all the time. Fantastic, really good answers. Um, so I don't think we've had anything else come through. Um, so we're pretty much bang on time. Um, so unless anyone gets anything in quickly, um, I'd just like to wrap up by saying very special thanks to Simon and Jack. Thank you very much for being here tonight um, and for the talks that you've given. Um, so, uh, sorry, I just saw something go through there, but it's from you, Jack. <laughs> uh, so with that, we hope um, that this small event raised your interest in starting on your own digital journey. Um, I hope to see you all again. We are running these um, pretty much every week on a Monday um, evening um, on different topics with different speakers. Um, so for any of those, just um, please visit our social media channels like Facebook and Instagram, and you can see those being advertised every week. Um, and feel free to join. They're all free to join. So uh, with that, I wish you all a nice evening. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.